So welcome to video two in our Google Forms online class. Um, last time we looked at how to create a form and that's where we stopped on this screen. Now that we've completed the form we're going to look at ways to send it to participants and gather data. So before we do anything else check the top right hand corner here and make sure that your form is saved. Now Google saves most things automatically but uh, the form sheet not always so um, if you see the word save up here go ahead and click it it will say saving for a moment and then it will change to saved as you see mine is once that's done we can actually exit this edit form page and the way you do that is you just close the tab now uh, I'm assuming you're familiar with tab browsing because we've been using Google Chrome um, tab browsing allows you to switch back and forth from one tab to the other we're going to go ahead and just close this tab by clicking the X and that takes us back to our Google Docs home screen. Now it may not show up immediately but after a few seconds at least you should see your form that you just created. It will have this little green icon with the dots on it, form icon, and it will be called whatever you named your form, in this case technology survey. I'm going to go ahead and click that, single click it to open it up and you'll see this. You'll see what looks like a spreadsheet. Uh, the top row is going to have timestamp and then it's going to have each of your questions. The more questions you have, uh, the more columns they'll continue over on. So this is where the data is actually going to go once someone starts filling out your form, but you haven't sent it to anyone so there's nobody to fill it out yet. There are a lot of ways to send your form. Um, we're going to look at first at sending an email. And what this is, is this will send an email to your participants and it will have a link. They click the link and it will take them to the form. The way you do that is you go up here to the form menu item and you click send form. That brings up this dialog box uh, that says send the form to others and from here you can go ahead and type someone's email address in. Now if you're sending it to someone in Gaston County Schools like um, Anna Cheka in this case, her is typing her name in if it's someone you've emailed before will immediately start bringing up names and to uh, continue entering that in you just hit enter and that will put the full name in. And there's another so you can continue like this and manually add as many people as you want to send the form to. Um, you can also choose from your contacts here if you have contacts in, if you're using Gmail. Uh, you can also change the subject. By default, the subject is what the name of your survey is. Uh, if you choose, you can actually include the form itself in the email. That way, instead of seeing a link to click to get to the form, they will actually see the form that you created. I don't really like that option myself, but it's something you may choose to do. When you're ready, you will click send, and that will actually send the form to those people, and they will be able to fill it out. So after that email sends, you're going to find yourself back here at the edit form page. We're just going to close that out, and we'll find ourselves back on our data page. Um, you can actually look at your form and even take the form yourself by going up here to form in the menu and clicking go to live form. This shows you the form as it is live out there on the internet. And uh, you can even fill in the form. So I'm going to say my name, I'm going to say that I taught 12th grade, and I'm going to select a couple things here, and then submit. As you can see, this is the message that we set up earlier that they'll see, and for someone who's taking the form, they will probably just close that out and uh, go about their business. Now you'll notice that instantly, as soon as I hit submit, I got the data in here in my form. Now we talked about sending the form by email, but there are some other things you can do with this form. And the key to thinking about how people get this form is that when you go to live form, like we did just a second ago, this is actually a web page. It has a really long URL, but it is a web page and it's out there on the internet and uh, anybody who has that address can go to it. So another way that you can give this to people is by actually 
selecting this web URL, copying it, and then pasting that on your web page um, or embedding it in an email that you send out manually or any other way that you can think to give people that URL. Once they go to it, they're on this page and they are taking the form. So that's how you administer the form. Um, let's talk now about what you do with the data when you've got it. So to give you an idea of how forms work, I've gone in and filled in some data. I basically just went to the form and filled it in a number of times. And as you can see, we've got quite a lot of responses from people. Um, one way to look at the data is simply to look at it in spreadsheet form. This is a spreadsheet, so you can organize your data. So if we wanted to organize this column by alphabetical by name, we would click the drop down here and say sort column A to Z. And so it will sort it by alphabetical order. Um, we could do the same thing over here. We could sort by grade level. And so now we've got all our 9th grade teachers, all our 10th grade teachers, and 11th and 12th. Um, the column that, that the respondents don't fill in is timestamp, and that simply tells you the date and time that they actually hit the submit button and finished the form. And there's another way to view your data. You can also go here under form and say show summary of responses. And this one is really neat because it allow, it automatically gives you a graphical breakdown of your data. So here's what grade do you teach, here's what technology to use in your classroom, and then it also gives you the number of responses daily. And since I did these all on one day, of course it just is uh, 10 responses on one day. Uh, but that's often very useful. Finally, there may be times when you want to stop collecting data. There may be a deadline or you may just uh, want to do some analysis without having to worry about more data coming in when someone fills out the form. If that's the case, you just go to Form menu, and then down here there's an Accepting Responses line, and you notice it's checked, which means we're currently accepting responses. If we uncheck, and you'll see that it is unchecked now, then no further responses can come into this spreadsheet. If you want to turn Accepting Responses back on, you simply go here, click it again, and now it can be, uh, people can put in their responses again. Alright, that's it for basic forms. You now know how to create a form and how to send it out and how to look at your data.